Hey, Big Red, come check out these roads I made. Freaking wiggle. <laughs> I can teach you how to make them if you want. Does it look like I'm in the business of building to you? You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to keep making roads. They're super cheap and super easy. It's rubber. You can twist it. You can roll it up. You can do whatever you want. People are going to love these. They're great. I don't build. I destroy. Just more things for me to shoot at. As a lot of you know, right now I am working on building an entire village. I'm 3D printing buildings. I've already got a few of them done and things are starting to really get together, really work out and it's great. I showed you how I was doing my flocking and stuff like that. And now I gotta combine, I gotta connect these houses. You can't have a village without streets. So I gotta make streets. And I have learned a lot of different ways on how to do them. And yeah, if I was, if I was building this on foam, you know, that pink foam that you always see everybody using, I would definitely just cut the streets in myself. You know, just use a razor blade, cut them in. I, I've shown you how to make dungeon tiles in the past. Um, I even have a video on how to make dungeon tiles. So if you're curious, check that out. Um, and that's what I would do, but I'm not. I'm not working on the pink foam or anything like that. I'm trying to make this as budget friendly as I possibly can. And with me 3D printing all the buildings, I'm already getting a little expensive. So how can we make roads and make them for really cheap? Stick around and find out. One of the big reasons that I got into making terrain and all of this stuff was because I wanted to start playing D&D. You know, something I had always known about when I was a kid and I'd always wanted to play. And then, you know, I got kids of my own and I had nephews and brother-in-laws who wanted to play. And so we decided to start playing. And I quickly learned that I could hold their attention a lot more, especially the younger ones, if I had something physical to put in front of them. So I bought a 3D printer and I made figures and I made trees and I made taverns, you know, and I made things that they could look at. And then just part of that process was building terrain, building, you know, things with my hands instead of just 3D printing everything because, you know, 3D printing, it can cost you a lot of money. <laughs> and so I started building dungeon tiles and making cave things and, do, and doing all this stuff. And I loved it. Doing that part with my hands just, you know, scratched some primal itch that I had that I, you know, just wanted to, to make things. And so it was awesome. And that journey has just gotten better and better. I've learned how to make more things. And, you know, slowly these, these villages that used to just be one or two buildings, you know, on a table are now buildings with streets and grass and leaves and wells and fountains and you know all these great things that kind of make them come alive am i at the end of that process yet you know am i amazing no but it's good enough that i feel awesome as i do it and it just you know makes me feel good about playing D and in these worlds that i've created that i've physically created <laughs> and uh so that's how this process started um one day when we were playing D&D, &D, um, my characters were going out on the ocean and I wanted to learn how to make ocean tiles, you know, ocean that they could go on. I had experimented with, you know, painting paper and then putting hot glue over the top of it to make it look like water, you know, for rivers and things like that. And then I made my actual rollout you know, basically almost a, a map with a grid and water and I colored it and everything. And I loved how it turned out. And I, you know, I still use it from time to time whenever we go out on the ocean. And I thought, well, if I did that to make an ocean, I could probably do it to make other things, right? And it's just silicone, latex, you know, which you can buy for two, three dollars a bottle. You can paint it, you can roll it up, you can pack it away. You can put it somewhere and it doesn't take up a ton of space. You can have an entire two foot stretch of road that rolls up and fits in a card box. You know, well, 
a big card box for those of you who play like Magic the Gathering. <laughs> um, and so that's what I set out to do. And it turned out pretty good, I think. So let's talk about how to do it. Um, the first time I did it, I basically just put down baby powder, you know, on top of a silicone mat that I had because I didn't want it to stick to anything. And I thought worst case scenario, I could probably separate the two silicones, uh, but definitely put something in between them, you know, talcum powder, whatever you want. Um, I used baby powder and it comes off of it nice and easy. It's kind of cool how it actually works. You can just do a nice thin layer of water and then as it's starting to dry, just kind of move it over. So whatever, whatever works for you, but baby powder is what worked for me. And the first time I did it, I just put down the caulk and just kind of wet it down my fingers and just rubbed it over the top and just made it as smooth as I could, which it worked. It really worked. But the problem is, is that the road is, you know, half an inch thick in some spots and things like that. So what I ended up doing, what I ended up doing was creating this, just using popsicle sticks. It's a little three inch by, you know, two popsicle tall um, stretch. And so when I make my roads now, I just fill this in and flatten them down on the top. And then once I pull that off of the silicone, I go through and I use one of these. This is a texture wheel. Okay, you can find files to 3D print different textures. This is just Stone Road. And so this one, you know, I've been using a lot. I think it's really cool. Uh, but there's a bunch out there for dungeon tiles, for city streets, for cobblestones and things like that. So find the one that you want and use it. You know, then while, while the top is nice and wet, you can um, cover the top with a little more baby powder and then just roll this right over the top. Um, don't do it in a straight pattern, otherwise your road's just going to be repetitive over and over again. Try and do it at an angle or, you know, just kind of do one stretch and then do another stretch and another stretch. Make it make it look how you want to. Offset it a little bit so that the stones aren't, you know, too much. Or just leave it how it is. If you like that 5x5 five five grid, most of these make a nice little 5x5 five five grid for you. And then you let it dry. And then once the road has dried, paint it. Paint it whatever color you want. If you want it to be in a dungeon, paint it in dark black and gray. You know, if you want it to be a street, paint it with dirt in between the tiles or lighter colors, you know, or do whatever you want. That's, that's the coolest part of this is do whatever you want. And then once it's done, throw it on your table, roll it up for later, whatever you want to do. You now have a nice chunk of road that you can use whenever you want to for whatever you want to whatever game you're playing you can throw it down on your game board and it's nice and easy and like i said pretty cheap for a piece of road you know and especially if you can do two or three they don't have to be that long if you want to cut it get a pair of scissors and cut it and make alleyways and make things like that your imagination is the only thing that's going to stop you from taking this to whatever level you want to now, is this the easiest way to make a road? No, not not by far. There are other easy ways out there, but it's a cool way to make them. They're durable, they last a long time, and you can roll them up and use them whenever you want. They're nice and compact, which I love because when I play D&D, &D, sometimes I play it at my house, sometimes I play it somewhere else. And so sometimes you got to move. You got to be able to take it with you and having one that's, you know, pretty pretty tough and rugged and you can just roll up and throw it a bag is nice to have so for me this was kind of a win-win situation time will tell how well it holds up you know obviously silicone is going to hold up a little better than latex or something like that but we'll see if i have to make some more in the future i got the stuff to do it and it really doesn't take that long make sure you're letting it dry and you know it could take 24 to 48 hours but make sure you let it dry before you paint it and then you should be good to go so hopefully you like this idea. Hopefully it's something that you can see yourself doing or that you work on right now. A lot of us have, you know, silicone tubes just laying around the house. Go ahead and grab one, throw it on the whatever surface that you have. Don't, you know, put it on something. You don't want to just leave it on your table, but put it on some surface and give it a try. 
I have been very surprised and happy with the results that I've gotten from this. And I hope you will be too. You know, and if you've got any little tidbits and any little things that you can share with me on how you make roads, and if you think your way is better, let me know. Tell me. Show me why it's better. And I am all ears. I am all open to making this hobby better and easier for everyone. So if you want to stick around while we go on that journey, like, subscribe, watch the channel, watch what we do, and hopefully we'll make something that you like. And if not, well, tell us, teach us, help us make it a little better, and I will spread that knowledge to everyone that I can. Thank you so much for joining us here at Pulsegate as we strive to make this town, as we you know, are trying to make the tabletop gaming experience better for ourselves and for you. Please stick around. Keep on watching. We're just getting bigger and we're just getting better. And as always, don't spend so much time building your world that you forget to spend some time in it. Until next time.